So the, the idea with virtual currencies is that you are having an experience uh, at on a website or in a game or at Burger King. Any place, any environment that you're in is, an, is a place where you could take out your wallet and use U.S. dollars, which is essentially a virtual currency based on very little as we we're seeing recently, right? I mean, the United States is now printing the money based on their brand. Uh, it's a currency that we all agree to exchange value using. You could then take that money and buy other virtual currency that Burger King or the game could make up. In the case of Wonder Hill, we made up rubies, and you buy rubies. You can then use those rubies in that context to purchase all sorts of things. You could buy a wheelbarrow. You could buy land. You could buy the ability to shout out to the rest of the community by spending rubies. So anything you might want in that context can be purchased using that virtual currency. The British pound is a good example. When you go to that world of, of, of the UK, you need to use their currency to buy things there. And now all we're doing is doing that inside of games. And so you're taking what's happened in the real world and just mimicking it in silicon, if you will, mimicking it in software. Uh, Second Life has done a great job of selling Linden dollars to people. It's a $450 million a year economy in Linden dollars. And people take U.S. dollars, they buy the Linden dollars, and then they use those Linden dollars in the world. They use those Linden dollars to pay people to help design t-shirts in the world that they then sell those t-shirts to other people who pay them Linden dollars to buy the t-shirts. And that's all happening inside the virtual world in, in Second Life. And at Wonder Hill, it's happening inside of our, our games, if you will. They're flash-based little games. One of them is called Green Spot, and you build out your green spot, and there's actually land, and you have multiple pieces of land, and you, you put characters on it, and you, you design them, and you grow things uh, in this world. Uh, you know, and they're, they're beautiful things, and it's, it's entertainment, and it's an escape, and you're willing to pay for that. There's a certain percentage of the people who are willing to pay for that. And, uh, that's how the business works. That's what virtual currency is. And, and I think that, uh, as I saw in the 90s, everyone was focused on moving magazines and TV and radio onto the Internet, and that was the wrong thing to do. I mean, it has kind of worked for a few companies, but generally the really big hits have been user-generated content. That's what the Internet uniquely does. In the same way that now everyone's focused on uh, advertising, uh, and and uh, everyone is focused on advertising, but the virtual currency model is actually probably a higher margin model that satisfies everyone in the community better, right? So what happens with a subscription is everybody pays 10 bucks per month, let's say, to get access to the content. Some people might value that content at $1,000 a month, and some people might value it at $2 a month, and the people who value it at $2 a month won't pay 10, so you don't get any value from them. And the people who value it at $1,000 a month you're losing $990 per month of value that you're creating for them. So the subscription model is very wasteful in terms of how it captures the value that you're creating for your users. Whereas a virtual currency model would allow that person who values it at $2 to pay $2 and, val and allows the person who values it at $1,000 to pay $1,000. At every step of the way, every consumer is happy with the service because they are paying up to the value that they ascribed to the service. And you're happier because you're actually getting more revenue from for the service that you're providing. And so it's it's a much better business model, I think, than a subscription or than advertising, because advertising is generally annoying. Um, it, you're interrupting someone from what they're really here to do, and there's a trade-off between, you know, the more money you make, the worse the experience is. You know, certainly with, with television or radio, that's true. The more they interrupt the music with ads, the worse your radio experience is. The more they interrupt the TV show with ads, the worse your experience of watching you know, CSI is. And that's the problem with the advertising model, is it's annoying. So, so I think virtual currency is a much better model. And just as we went from, um, just as I felt like we were moving from uh, editorialized content to user-generated content, I feel like we're going to move from subscriptions and, and advertising to virtual currencies over the next 10 years. I think that's the big move that we're, we're engaged in on the internet. And I think you're going to see that model, which is really most easily implemented on the Internet. That's why it started there uh, back in about 2000. You're going to see that move 
external to the internet. You're going to see it move into Starbucks. You're going to see it move into to Burger King environments or to um, the NBA. Uh, you're going to you're going to see it permeate other uh, more physically based entertainment environments. So that's why I'm focused on Wonder Hill.